right, everybody. Welcome to the Studying Brew, episode 816. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it's that many. Uh, we're going to have a great one tonight, folks. It is going to be Test Taking Techniques Tuesday. It's so good to have that Test Taking Techniques because it's the skills that pays the bills. It is the extra that you've been looking for. That's that extra edge. It'll help you get a pass notice because content is not always enough. No, I said it. Content is not always enough. It was as simple as memorizing a book. I would have told you that. If it was as simple as do all of these things and do this and then memorize that, I would have told you that, right? Sure. But it's not. It's about how to read those questions. So Brandy's going to show you how she does it. Last night, we showed you how to get those keywords. Tonight, we're going to show you how she puts all those together with those techniques so you can simply answer some questions. But first, we got a commercial. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we want to say thank you all for joining us for uh, introductions first. My name is Andy. I am the guy that answers all the phone calls, text messages, all that great stuff. But you're not here for me. So you're here for Brandy. She's got her Series 6, 63, 26, 65, and her Series 7, which makes her more than qualified to teach you all the things you need to know. So that way you too can get a pass notice and strut hard at that Christmas tree party. Christmas party. Christmas tree party? Do people have Christmas tree party? I don't know. No. I don't know why I said Christmas tree party. People hire people now to do their tree. Do they really? Isn't that not fun? Wouldn't you just want to do it yourself? I don't know. Isn't that part of the fun, though? Like, you yell at your kids. They didn't put it in the right spot. I, I mean, that's... I don't know. Put the popcorn on the string. Dude, we should do that this year. No. We that, cannot. Kona, Kona would eat, eat the tree. Kona. Kona would eat the tree. Never mind. There would be no tree. Uh, but no, uh, I did not know that. You know, because they hire people to do their light. Their well, that I kind of understand. I don't like getting on roofs. Have seen those designer trees? Why don't they just do it themselves? My, I don't know. My mom's always done her designer trees. I don't know. Just do it yourself. I do nostalgia wow. trees. Anyways. Brandy has the ones where the kids make stuff. And she has them on there. Yeah, that's the country we got. Anyways. So, anywho. Uh, yeah, welcome. I'm going. People are getting their Christmas stuff up. But more importantly, you're getting your study on. We are heading into the new year. We want to get these uh we want to get these pass notices that knocked out. Make sure we're heading right down the right path. Hitting January with a bunch of pass notices. And that way, we too can make those noises at the Christmas party that Brandy's doing over there. And uh, there's nothing like, you know, asking for, you know, you know, hey, how's it going with the retirement plans? How's it going with, uh, have you started studying? You know, have you started studying, I guess, right? If you want to plug us. But have you started saving for your retirement? Yes. Have you started doing any of that stuff? There's a lot of conversations that happens when you're around family. Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, and uh, it's a great way to just get away from the usual bad conversations like politics. Nothing divides a family right now like politics. Good grief. Really? Anyways. All right. You ready to go? Yeah. All right, Brandy. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Find my mouth. Anytime Brandy wants to get this thing going, we'll start. I'm just... Uh, I'm just a, what do they call that? A first mate on the SS Brandy. DJ Andy. You're the captain. You're DJ Andy. I just swab the decks. <laughs> swab the decks. Clean the poop deck. Nah. That's what they call it. I know. It's funny. I know. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Here we go. As if I've ever been on a ship. Guys, I get so seasick. I can't even get past the buoy. It's not even funny. It's like, as soon as I'm like barely out the dock. <laughs> just all over i can't do it anyways if you want to get more onto our online on-demand uh, course videos we got our whole self-study program going we got something great coming in january but until then we're going to do a lot of great stuff dropping for the for the members this next month it's going to be a great month to be a member brandy and i are going to be dropping all new material for all the different uh, exams we're going to have a lot of sessions with test taking techniques we're going to have a lot of we've been doing this this week we've been doing a lot of uh, just q and a with our students, mm -hmm. uh, we've been really mixing it up and it's just only going to get better through December as we give all that we can to our students as we head into new year. Nobody has this much accessibility. Nobody has this much, much interaction and it helps out so much when you can just ask a simple question in the class and just at time and time again, you can just do it all the time, you know, in those member sessions and plus our Kona community. So uh, if you want to know how we get all those key words and the techniques, get our study guides. If you want to get help and accessibility for free, join the Kona community. Uh, and if you want all the other good stuff that we have in our live sessions, our members, all the extra that we give in, to our members, 
on-demand courses, live sessions, all that great stuff, even tutoring. Check out, uh, check us out by hitting that QR code, scan the link or scan the code, hit the links in the chat and uh, join us. All right, we got uh, an orientation, that, by the way, that explains all the stuff that we have that we will be redoing really soon. Yes. Uh, we have uh, an 866 number there, 866-HEY-KONA. That's if you want to call me, but it doesn't let me text out. So if you want me to text you, hit me up on Telegram, Discord, Patreon, Instagram, any of those, and uh, I will reach out and uh, text you back. Yes. Um, I prefer Telegram. I prefer Instagram. I prefer Discord over Patreon because yep. I can send... So if you guys need a PDF or a link or whatever, the, that's way more accommodating. So uh, hit me up over there if you like that text back. Otherwise, I'm giving you a phone call. And we know how it is these days. It's 2023. Nobody likes phone calls. Nobody, really. Yeah. I know. Unless you're old school like me. Phone calls are great. I feel like so many things are cleared up when you can talk to people, but that's just me. All right. Well, we got a live session reminder happening tomorrow. Yep. That's Brandy, and she's reminding you, members, bring your questions on content techniques and PMA. Yay. We'll be having, uh, like I said, your questions for the Series 65 tomorrow. Uh, let me say this. Not always does the Series 65 people show up. Uh, so if you're a member and you're just, like, wanting to study, like Dan Boyle out there uh, in the mountain area, uh, just go ahead and be on there. Just ask questions. Fill up the time. Who cares? Use it. Uh, if you, you know, it so happens Brandy's on there, she'll, she'll answer it anyway. So, uh, 65ers get the priority, but I'm just going to say this guys, I'm just going to say that I don't think they're going to be there as much. So I would just, I would just do it. Look at him putting it out there. Like I am, I'm calling all these series 60, 65 people out, Later. uh, because you know what, why, why waste time? That, why waste time? There you go. Yeah. Brandy, Brandy gets bored easy. So tomorrow we got that happening at 10 a.m. Pacific. 11 a.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. in the East. And uh, you just show up with that member's code and just hit your uh, email box. It is the November member code as uh, as uh, in your email that just went to your email box. Email. How many times did I put email on that? So, email? Email. I, I, well, I mean, the youngsters don't use email anymore. That's what I've been They're told. open. I've been, I would say snap, but I didn't say I snapped it. No. All right. If you're not following me on, if you're not following us on Instagram, I wish you would, because I tell you what, when they give me a picture and they let me know, guess what, Brandy? What's up? We add another one to the Kona Hall of Fame because we got, yes, we do. We got a passer. We got a passer. Yes, we do. We got a Series 65 passer today. Speaking of the 65er, and this is why I think there's a VNB of vacancy because this girl, she just not only passed these exams, she dominated these exams. Most of these exams she passed on the first attempt. Um, uh, she's got her MLO. She's yep. got her SIE, mm -hmm. her Series 6, her 63, and now her Series 65. Congratulations to Bethany Bell on getting this done, uh, knocking it out already. There she is, security uh, financial advisor. Yes, rep. investment advisor rep. Investment advisor rep. I knew I'd say it all wrong. Investment advisor rep. There you go. So congratulations on getting that Series 65. She knocked it out on the first attempt. The first go. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The first go. Uh, that is the beauty of using us. That is the beauty of us and the system. She literally just knocked out all her exams pretty much on the first exam. I think there was only one she had to do it the second attempt, and that was it. But I'm not too positive. Uh, but she said, well, I passed my 65 today on the first try. I owe that to you. I'm so blessed to have found Kona, the Kona family. Thank you for all that you do. And I hope that this is a little reminder that what you do is a greatly, is greatly appreciated. Uh, this is definitely bittersweet, sweet, but I'm so thankful to have dominated these tests with Kona family by my side. Oh, thank you. And it is bittersweet because I know that you're moving on up. Yes. Just like George, you got, you got just like George and Wheezy did. You're moving on up uh, and uh, going to that next level. And we uh, we send send off and say, you know, Godspeed. We wish you the best. And uh, congratulations on leveling up. Anything you want to say about what helped her pass? Honestly, you worked out. You worked with her a lot. And I know she was very active on the discord. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. She um, she plugged in. She asked questions on the message board. She sent me messages, um, and, you know, directly 
And, you know, it was, you know, she, she would kind of do like a, like a mental check-in, like, Hey, this is where my scores are. I, I mean, we, we did do a lot of like text tutoring, but guys, she was also on the live session. So she was fully, fully engaged. Fully engaged, always had questions, always showing up. And I know she vert used the, um, you can set up study groups over there on our study, you know, study group with the people on the discord. Uh, and she would do video, you know, study groups mm -hmm. over there with, uh, with, um, Jason Croft while they were doing the 63 for a minute. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she just, you know, she was just very vocal over there and just got the help and just really plugged into the community and it just got the win. Yeah. Just keep winning. I mean, guys, that's what that discord's all about. I know so many people asking, what's it for? It's a study tool. And then they just, it may, they make it work. Yeah. And uh, it, if you can use a search engine, if you can use a voice, you know, you know how to text. She allowed herself to be coached. She did allow herself to be coached and she was consistent yes. and very disciplined. So congratulations on getting this done. It is bittersweet, I know. but I know you're moving on up and uh, you're always it. part of the Kona family. Always. Yes. Brandy literally cried today. I did. When she got that message. I did. Thank you. Just messages sometimes hit you right in the right time, the right spot, guys. Just saying. Okay. I know Brandy's going to lose it. Let's just move on. Same. We got a lot of adversity Congrats, lately, guys. Congrats, Bethany. <laughs> got a lot of adversity today or in the last couple of days. So we're really, really, really blessed to get that message today. Yes. Thank you. All right. You ready? Uh, yeah. Let's get it going. Let's right. get it on. Let's do it. As they say in the ring. All right. Test taking techniques Tuesday. I don't care what I don't care what anybody says. I know there's a lot of people who go, well, I know techniques. You just you just process of elimination. That's all you do. There's <laughs> that's one part. That's one that little one, piece. one tiny little piece. One piece. Guys, but there is so much more to having a test taking technique and a strategy. Uh, if you're not following us on Instagram or YouTube or anything like that, uh you need to because Brandy just dropped another one. She's like DJ Khaled over here. Uh just keeps dropping those hits. And uh, today she had she had another short that hit. Uh, please like it and subscribe. I know I, I hear that's good if we get a lot of subscribers and likes on those YouTube videos. I appreciate yes. it. Yes. Uh, and so does Brandy. I so do. that's taking techniques Tuesday. So Brandy is going to put up these questions and answers up on the screen. We're going to have lots of different questions from different exams. We do have rules to test taking techniques Tuesday. It's not just simply just watch and take notes. Rule number one, you're not allowed to ask what exam did that question come from? I don't want you caught up in like, oh, am I supposed to be studying this? Oh my gosh, this looks so hard. This is difficult. I don't get it. I don't know if I studied this. That is so, that is such the wrong way to look at all this. This is the wrong way. Look at the techniques. Look at the strategies. Look at the way she's taking this on. Look at the way she's going about it. That's what you need to do. Take notes on that. How did, why did she go for the answers first? Because she reads the questions with intent. Look at her answer the question without even looking at the question. What? Yes, yeah. it's possible. Take note of the fact that most of the time, you don't even need to know securities what? knowledge at all to get these right. That's true. Guys, so many times you guys overthink it, overdo it, and you just miss out on the easy ones. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to all that. But you know what? How do you get good at a skill set? How do you get good at anything? You can't be like Ellen Iverson. You got to put some practice in. So what we want you to do here uh, and get the, is, is to do a 10 question flash quiz, 10 questions, 10 minutes. That's right. Where, did, where, what, what question, what key bank, whatever key bank you're in, whatever you're quizzing in, whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. Wherever area, you function, unit, you haven't studied at all, doesn't matter. You get into that cue bank, just grab 10 questions. And just try the techniques out. Just do the technique. It's a skill set. Just look at all the different patterns. Guys, break the cycle of always approaching a question from the topic standpoint. I know it. I don't know it. Oh, man. This one's don't. Let's just look at the words. Let's just look at the Observe. words. Observe. Look at the words. Apply a technique. Mm -hmm. Stop doing it the old pedestrian way that you've been taught when you were 10. Right. Let's move up to the adult class. Learn a different way and a strategy and just do it that way. It helps you out so much. Yes. Helps out so much. Uh, Gladys said that doing the 10 question, 10, the 10 minute, 10 question, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, the flash quizzes. Yeah. Helped her pass her exams with her timing on the 63. Yep. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. just saying, guys. Works. It works. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right. 
engaging in competitive pricing, guilty of backing away, guilty of marking the close, permitted to change the quotes. So guys, I've got guilty and guilty, right? So when I see guilty and guilty, I see this and I'm like, mm, this is opposite or similar, right? Because they're starting with the word guilty. Right. So I'm looking for, so now when I read this question, I'm going to look for something that looks like something a, criminal, something criminal, something uh, that's a no, no, but I, you know, and I might not even know what, um, backing away or marking the clothes means, but I feel like C talks about the clothes, right? Like the clothes maybe of the market. I heard coffees for closers, <laughs> right? So that's what I'm going to look for when I look in the question. Right. So I'm basically going to use process of elimination or I'm going to make a match. So let's read the question. It says a broker dealer is quoting. That's all about quotes, a security. And rather than filling a customer's order, decides to change its quote. So rather than filling the order, I change my quote. Well, if I'm thinking that the answer is B and C, B or C, it doesn't say anything about close. It doesn't say anything about like the end of the day. It doesn't sound anything like that. I'm going to go with B, right? Keep it is simple. I just narrowed it down to those two. Now, we have said, does if you see two that are opposite of each other, does that sound, I mean, is it always that way? No, but it's like that the majority of the time, like a lot of the time, like more times than not. So I'm going to just keep doing that, especially if I don't know what the answer is. Why not? Why not? Exactly. All right. I have value funds, income funds, growth funds, and index funds. Wait, I got this. They're all about funds. They are. <laughs> yeah, good job, right? So I'm going to kind of put what I think relates to these words. Well, growth is the easiest, right? That means I'm growing. Value funds, I think of Walmart. Wow. Why? Because it's like inexpensive? Yeah, it's value. There's value, right? When you walk into that store, there's value signs everywhere. That is true. I think that's like the their their brand, right? Value brand. I have no clue. I'm out. I'm out. So. I'm out of the Walmart game. I right. don't know. Income is exactly that. Income. I feel like I'm gonna get some like recurring income from that. And then index. Oh yeah, see great value. And then index. Um, some of us know what it is because we're studying. Some of us don't know what it is. You know is. what I think like an index? Hmm. I just think of like um well, I think of an index card, but I always think of like, you know, a a list. I think of a list of uh, certain things grouped together. That's what I think of. Like, uh, I have an index of like certain companies, certain things I'm watching. Okay. I like that. Yeah, that's what I think. I like that. I like that. All right. So let's look at the question. The question says, a conservative individual wants to invest in an equity fund, which consists of companies that are considered a bargain. Ding, 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 ding. Say less. And literally, that's what exactly what she did. And the only thing I would have changed at the end of Brandy's approach, and I know that I don't like, you know, you don't want to correct the professor, but sometimes when you're on the real exam, especially if you're on the real exam, I would go all the way through the question at least to go make sure there's not an accept or, you know, one of those those curveballs at the end. He's absolutely right. Again, let's chalk that up. I think we're at 10 now. I, no, we're under we're under 10. So. Just kidding. Um, no, but guys, no, seriously, if I'm taking that 10 question flash quiz, I don't care. I'm I see bargain. I see inexpensive. I'm just going to click. But on the test more. Yes, I am definitely going to make sure I look out all the words in the question. Yeah, make sure there's no curveballs at the end. Right. Absolutely. Most suitable is definitely a hint that you are on the right track. Exactly. All right. Current yield, yield to call, yield to maturity, and nominal yield. Oh my gosh, is that, that this thing? Right? I don't oh know. Oh my gosh. Ah, I don't even know. That gives me stomach cramps thinking about the Peter Totter thingy. Right? But check this out. The total rate of return. Oh, man. Oh my goodness. I'm just Matt. kidding, guys. Uh, that an investor will receive if the bond is held until it's called. Look, called, call. Yes, we're not thinking. We're not thinking. Yeah, I would think. Just connect the thought. Sometimes that's all you got. Guys, you, you might be backed up against the wall. You might be just sitting there and you're just like, oh my gosh, I spent way too much time. I didn't listen to Brandy. 
and I got no time left on the clock. I'm just going to just technique this thing out because I'm not going to take zeros on the last, you know, 20 questions. Guys, if we would have approached this with like the question first, the total rate of return that an investor will receive if a bond is held until it's called by the issuer, I guarantee us all of us would have stopped and cut and just got into a cold sweat. You would have got a nervous fart out of you at least. Yeah, like we're either going to do math. How do you do total return? What's this call thing? I bet you it's the seesaw. And look at we didn't need any of that. Yeah, and I know people when they see the yield, they already get that nervous tummy. You know, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. All right, I have Congress. I have the Federal Reserve Board. I have the FDIC, and I have the Comptroller of the currency. Can I can I mention this? Huh? FDIC is insurance. It is insurance for what? A bank. I don't know why, but I remember going to the bank with my mom and always seeing those gold plaques. So right there, I'm just looking at that, and I'm like, ooh, that's a bank. That's right. Currency is an A and D. Well, I don't know about A, but definitely in D, because it says currency here. What's a comp controller? I don't know. Yeah. Look, I know some people are like, I know what it is. I know what we know what it is, too. Yeah. We're going with, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, Federal Reserve Board. I hear about this in the news. Oh, they're jacking my interest rates again. With the interest rates. That's uh, Jerome Powell. Yeah. Right. And then Congress, these are the people who, like, we vote. They make the laws. They're crusty. Yeah. Right? Um, but uh, they make the laws. Exactly. Do they oh. make the laws? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, laws. I think taxes. <laughs> right? They argue about making laws more than they do. <laughs> right? Um, a is a loan. I would say out of all of these, yeah, A is like the one that's like kind of random because it seems like currency, banks, uh, the rates, like that all kind of goes together. But Congress is like kind of random, right? I, I agree with that. Out of yeah, all my choices. It's part of the, the, the branches of government. Yeah, it's government. The government branch. Right? It's government. All right. So let's look at the question super easy i mean i meant not i'm sorry i didn't mean easy i meant short i meant short who enacts fiscal policy well when we talk about fiscal policy we always hear this during election time mm. that's where i always hear that word yep and if you haven't they do they do which means elections congress don't overthink it don't overthink it so many of you probably would have gone with federal reserve board right but they don't make fiscal policy they do what monastery yes money they watch the money yes not all, this. all about the money they're all about inflation they're all about jobs that it, is the federal reserve yeah Fund. they don't set up where the cat checks are going no yeah school policy is more like where are they writing checks to and who are they writing checks to and how much checks do we have left fun fact guys it's not the irs that sets tax law it's actually congress that sets the tax law. The IRS is just the people that have to. Do you know how it. I remember it is because uh, I'm a little bit older than most on here, but I know there's some folks on here that remember this. But remember when George Bush Sr. got elected and he did the whole read my lips, no new taxes? Oh, yeah. That's how I remember presidents, you know, taxes. Cool. they said the tax, the tax, how yep. much taxes and how taxes are set up. Oh, my gosh. Read my lips. All right, I have firm specific suitability obligation. Firm specific suitability obligation. Interesting. I don't, that's weird. Reasonable basis. We always like that word reasonable here. It's a good word. Quantitative. That sounds like number related, right? And customer specific suitability. This is like right on, right? Because if you're making suitable recommendations, it has to be for the customer, right? Now, if you guys are actually studying, you guys should know the three of these. I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying. And yes, A and D are kind of opposite because they both talk about firm specific or customer specific. I, I agree with that. Let's go to the question, right? Mm -hmm. Which FINRA suitability obligation requires a broker dealer that has control over a customer account to have a reasonable basis. Wow, check that out, man. It hit the suitability. It hit the word obligation. It hit the word broker dealer. It hit the word reasonable. But that none of that's the question. 
the question really is that a series of recommended securities transactions are not excessive. What it's basically saying is this part right here. When we talk about the when we talk about excessive, isn't that a number? It is quantitative. How do you know it's excessive? Because there's a number on it. Right. So guys, you were only supposed to have 10 M&Ms. You had 50. That's, that's excessive. Number. See, this question, I love this question because this is a question that makes you pay attention to what's actually being asked. It had nothing to do with the broker dealer, had nothing to deal with the word obligation or the weird word suitability. It had nothing to do with reasonable. It had everything to do with the excessive parts. That was a great question. See, we, we tend to overlook what the question is actually asking. We always add what's not there and ignore what is there. Right. Always. And it's just answer the question. I always think of like court, you know, where they just go the fact, just the fact, just answer the question. Yes or no. Yes. That's one of the hardest parts for me, by the way. I know. Keeping it some, keeping it to what you see on the screen. Real life too. Yeah. Hey. All right, guys. Nominal yields, yield to maturity, yield to call, current yield. Didn't we just see this? We did just see this. Hmm. What did we say about that? It was yield to call. The total rate of return. Wait, I swear we just had this question. Well, I picked this, right? Yeah. We'll receive if a bond is held until it matures. It's maturity. Look at Brandy trying to fool you. Boom, boom, boom. Again, looking at what it says there, again. Yeah. The other one was held until yield to call. This one is just maturity. Yep. Look, the exam is going to be exactly that way, and you're going to question yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're going to question yourself. Don't second guess yourself. Go with it. Don't don't go against your gut. Yeah. Like It can't be that easy. Yeah. Sometimes it really is that easy. Yeah. Yeah. It says held until it's mature. Would it be the yield to maturity? Yeah. So like grammatically, someone put, I think too much. Yeah. Yes. So when you take your quiz right now, think less mm -hmm. and 10 question flash quizzes are no perfect time. because there's no time, no time to think. So a lot of people, when they do that 10 question flash quiz and they stay uh, coachable to that and they do it in 10 minutes and they just go with what we said, you just click it. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You learn that you actually get a better score because you're thinking less. The other thing is, and if you're wrong, no big deal. It's just a quiz. Who cares? Some people take these quizzes so serious as if like a hand's going to come out and slap you in the face for getting it wrong. Guys, I'm going to let you in on a little secret I tell our, our member. There's no physical harm if you get it wrong? No, that is true. I mean, I don't think that that's a secret. I don't know. Some people, the way they react. Yes. No, guys, the secret is this. If you stop looking at your quizzes as like you've got to get 100% every single time, that you have to be right every single time you answer a question, and instead you start looking at your quizzes like they're learning tools, the game changes. You'll do so much better. Yep. And doing better is progress. And progress means you're closer to getting a pass notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. We are so appreciative for all of you being here, making the choice to get your study on. Staying consistent is everything. You want to know what it takes? Consistency. Bethany wouldn't have passed all those exams without being consistent. And I know there's quite a few people that already passed exams with us on here already, and they wouldn't have passed if they didn't stay consistent. Consistency, consistency, consistency. That's what it takes. Be consistent, everybody. Be disciplined. Get it done. All right. We'll have uh, those, that live session tomorrow for the Series 65. It is your questions. Remember, be prepared. We'll be back tomorrow night for Hard Hitting Wednesday. Tomorrow is content. Tomorrow we are going to go over qualified and non-qualified. So if you ever struggle with that topic, we're going to be doing some free content tomorrow night. So be here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your friend's face. That's all I know. Keep that positive mental attitude. PMA, everybody. Have a great night.
thank you guys so much for being on. We super, super appreciate you. Don't forget to practice these test taking techniques in your next quiz. Get those flash quizzes done. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great one.